the overcoat written by ruskin bond about the author born in kasoli in 1934 ruskin bond grew up in jamnagar gujarat shimla new delhi and dehradun apart from 3 years in the uk he has spent all his life in india and now lives in mussoorie with his adopted family he is one of the most loved authors of india his poignant tales about life in the hills have appealed to the young and the old alike in his writing career he has written over 500 short stories and also novels he has been writing for over 60 years and now has over 120 titles in print novels collections of short stories poetry essays anthologies and books for children his first novel the room on the roof received the prestigious john levillen reese award in 1957 he has also received the padma shri the padma bhushan and two awards from sahitya academy one for his short stories and another for his writings for children In 2012 the Delhi government gave him its lifetime achievement award. Brief outline of the short story. It was a clear frosty weather and patches of snow still lay on the roads of the hill station. The moon was over the Himalayan peaks. The narrator was not in a mood to attend the party at the Kaparias. because of the chill outside the narrator would have been quite happy to be on the bed with a book and a hot water bottle at his side still he decided to go to the party as he felt that it would be churlish of him not to go to the party while he had already promised them to go on his way to the kaparias the narrator met chuli who was of 16 or 17 years old She looked rather old-fashioned with her long west-length hair, a flimoxy sequined dress of pink and lavender. Her dress was beautiful and she had lovely eyes and a winning smile. Both of them walked together to the Kaparias. They had arranged a party on Christmas Eve and the house was decorated brightly with lights. Julie was not known to anybody in the party, though it was quite crowded. She was not seen eating. She was seen flitting about from one group to another, talking, listening and laughing. She did not bid goodbyes to others, nor did she wish them merry christmas when it was time to take a leave. The narrator and the girl were walking back home. At about the spot where they had met each other, the girl preferred to deviate her way for a shortcut which she said she knew quite well. The narrator agreed to this and he did not have to escort her home. The narrator left the court with the girl for the time being as there was cold wind and asked for its return the next day. The next day the narrator crossed a brook and reached the Ulsborn to meet Judy. Entering an iron gate he encountered a dilapidated house. There he saw a roofless ruin, a pile of stones, a shattered chimney a few doric pillars where a veranda had once stood he was bewildered at this old mrs taylor informed him that nobody lived at woolsburn for over 40 years the mackinnons lived there they had a girl named julie who died of consumption and her grave was in the cemetery just down the road The narrator visited the cemetery almost against his will. The bones of humans lay here and there under the pristine sky. Julie's grave was easily identifiable as it had a simple headstone with her full name, Julie Mackinnon, along with the years clearly outlined on it. The tombstone stood unbelievably intact. When many monsoons had swept across the cemetery wearing down the other stones, The narrator turned to leave when he caught a glimpse of something familiar behind the headstone. On looking farther, 
He discovered it was his overcoat kept neatly folded on the grass without a thank you note. Something soft and invisible brushed against his cheek. That was the summary of the main short story. Now let's focus on the meanings of some of the words used in the main story. Churlish means indecent or impolite. Remoxy means sparkling or dazzling. Flitted about means moved or turned attention from one to the other very quickly. The word queer means strange. Symmetry means a place where dead people are buried. The word pristine means calm and clear. Escort means to go with another person. Scramble means to climb using hands and feet. Doric means built in plain old Greek style and consumption means a lung disease. Description of the girl the narrator met on the way to the Caparias. Her name was Julie. She must have been 16 or 17 years old. She looked rather old-fashioned. She had long hair hanging to her waist. She wore a flimoxy sequin dress, which was pink and lavender in color. She had a lovely smile and lovely eyes. The way Julie enjoyed herself at the party. She didn't eat much. She flitted about from one group to another. She was dancing almost continuously. She was wrapped up in music. Description of the house the narrator encountered. It had an iron gate, a roofless ruin, a pile of stones, a shattered chimney, and a few Doric pillars where a veranda had once stood. Information given by Mrs. Taylor. Nobody had lived at Ulsburn for over 40 years. The Mackinans lived there, one of the old families who settled there. They had a girl named Julie, who died of consumption, a lung disease. They sold the house and went away. No one ever lived there again and it fell into decay. Julie's grave was in the cemetery just down the road. Description of the cemetery the narrator visited. It was a small cemetery under the Deodars. Eternal snows of the Himalayas stood out against the pristine blue of the sky. The bones of forgotten empire builders, soldiers, merchants, adventurers, their wives and children lay there. Description of Julie's grave Julie's grave was easily identifiable. It had a simple headstone with her full name Julie Mackinnon, along with the years clearly outlined on it. The tombstone stood unbelievably intact when many monsoons had swept across the cemetery, wearing down the other stones. The uncanny features of Julie, the narrator had been indicating since the beginning. When the narrator saw Julie first, she was standing in the middle of the road. It was weird because of the time and the weather. Moreover, instead of walking towards the destination she was standing, she was not known to anybody in the party, though it was quite crowded. She was not seen eating, which is a common human quality. She was seen flitting about from one group to another, talking, listening and laughing. It was not stated clearly whether the others talked back to her. She was also not seen bidding others goodbyes or wishing them Merry Christmas when it was time to take a leave. She claimed she would scramble up the hillside through the narrow path. She also hesitated to meet the narrator again when he talked about the return of the coat. She disappeared up the hill. So that was all about the story. The story is quite a mystery. Even after completing the entire story, we don't know where Julie came from and where she went. All we know is that there is something supernatural. Julie was not a normal human being. As the writer himself says that ghost rumors or ghost stories are very common in the mountains. Thus, we are convinced that this Julie whom the narrator met was the same Julie who died 40 years ago. It was her spirit 
who came to meet the narrator and enjoy the party at the Kaparias, though it is not clearly stated in the story. It is left onto the imagination of the readers and the story ends with a note of mystery. Thus we see mystery and imagination are two main themes of this particular story. Next, talking about the characters, we see there are three characters in this story. The narrator, Julie and old Mrs. Taylor. A narrator is a person who narrates a story. Here, the person who is narrating the story is the narrator. Now, there are two ways to narrate a story. When the narrator is completely involved in the story's actions or is a full participant of the story's actions, the writing is said to be a first-person narrative. This particular story is a first-person narrative. And when the narrator is not a participant of the entire story, the story is told by a person who is not involved in the story's actions. The writing is said to be the third person narrative. In short, when the narrator is a character in the story, it is a first person narrative and when the narrator is not a character of the entire story, it is third person narrative. Now coming to the second character, Julie. Julie is the protagonist of the story. A protagonist is the character of the story revolving around whom the entire story is woven. A protagonist is the main character of the story. A protagonist is the primary agent that pushes the actions of the story forward. The third minor character of the story is old Mrs. Taylor who has a really brief part to play. She is the one to introduce the climax of the story. Now let's talk about the genre of the story. What is genre? It is the type of art or literature like comedy, tragedy, thriller, mystery, adventurous, etc. What is the genre of this particular story? It is a mystery. Why? Because it leaves some questions unanswered at the end of it. It consists of some secrets, some strange things which are difficult to be explained. This particular short story, The Overcoat by Ruskin Bond, consists of some supernatural elements in it and it stirs up the imagination of the readers. So that is all about The Overcoat by Ruskin Bond. Hope this video has been helpful to you all. If you have any doubt, please let me know in the comment section. Thanks for watching.